Hello folks, today is Friday, September 2nd, 2022. As usual, it's me, Jake, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this weekend. It's been a pretty good week. Some things I'm really excited about, so let's just jump in. First two stories are just about games I really like. The first is that we are officially now getting a new Mafia game. This is confirmed officially from the horse's mouth, uh, specifically the developers, Hangar 13. As you know, they were behind Mafia 3 and the newer remake version of the original Mafia game. So basically there was this like 20th anniversary celebration for the original Mafia game, which I was like very alive when that game came out. I like remember it distinctly. So that original game, if you're catching this video at the right time, uh, is available to download for free. It's rough, but it's still good. Uh, the remake is awesome, so I am excited uh, that Hangar 13 has now specifically come out and said that we are working on a new Mafia game, whether it be Mafia 4, whatever. We don't know anything else about it, but this is kind of like a double confirmation. I feel like from earnings calls or just like news in the past, we knew this was coming. I've known this has been coming for a long time now, but we've talked the past few weeks about rumors that it takes place earlier, like before the first game. So like in the twenties or something like that. So there's a lot of possibilities. I was saying it would be really cool for them to do kind of like a Godfather part two style story, like with like a young Vito Corleone coming to America from Sizzly. Anyway, sorry, I just like this stuff, but it's probably gonna be quite a few minutes before before we actually hear anything substantial. But we are gonna hear some new stuff about the new Assassin's Creed soon, thankfully. Uh, it actually leaked a lot earlier this week. It's, it's similar to reports we've talked about in the past. It's called Assassin's Creed Mirage, and it centers around Basim, the character from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is a spinoff where it's going to take place seemingly in like this open world Baghdad. And Ubisoft has announced the game specifically with like a cool teaser image and the fact that we're going to hear more about the game during uh, next weekend's big Assassin's Creed stream thing. Now the image is very cool. Seems like it might be Basm, kind of maybe confirms that, but what I see here, I'm, I'm an easy mark, like for nostalgia and shit. I've been playing the game since the original. So uh, if they are going back to basics, like the leaks and rumors suggest, I'm in. So uh, what a lot of people have, and we will link all of the sources down in the description below, of course, a lot of people from Jason Schreier to some other people on social media, some insiders have said basically that this is going to be like a return to its roots, where it's a more simple, straightforward, streamlined game uh, where Baghdad is the main city and just some surrounding areas. It's not a big massive thing. There aren't going to be RPG elements or choices, which usually I love all that stuff, but after so long with these new Assassin's Creed games, I would love a simplified fun game based around actual assassinating. Like I said, I'm an easy mark. The, tar the, the image that they put out is straight up just like, you know, Assassin's Creed 1. It's screaming. It's got the markets. It's got the people bustling around. It's got the dude in the white hood doing the cool pose with the original style blade. I'm in for that. But of course, it's worth noting that it comes in a different climate. Ubisoft has been a uh, very different company the last few years, and uh, their games are proving to be more and more divisive. And me personally, I've been more burnt out on their games more and more. I was actually a Ubisoft apologist for a lot of their games for the last few years, but at this point, I'm over it. So if they can really turn it around, I would love to see that. But again, note that most of the things I've been talking about are just leaks and rumors, so take all that, of course, with a grain of saw up sand, maybe, because of the setting. But all we know as of right now is that teaser image, and we're gonna get more information soon. Assassin's Creed Mirage. There you go. Switching gears, believe it or not, some Halo Infinite news. Now, 343 has taken the time to reveal their next stage in the roadmap, and we know a bunch of stuff is now coming. The next big season thing is March. 2023. Feels like a ways off, yes, but uh, the bigger thing is that 343 has announced that they are scrapping split-screen co-op campaign, much to the bummer of a lot of people. I know some people who love to play those games that way, and if you look online, it seems like people are pretty upset with that news. I'm curious to actually see the data subset of the people who are pissed about it and the people who would have actually have played that mode, but still, it doesn't really matter. I think that type of feature is something that a lot of people really want, specifically also because 343 uh, has said that they find that mode important in the past and now they're scrapping it to focus on other things. It's unfortunate. And then couple that with the roadmap news, which I'm out of the loop. I haven't played Halo multiplayer in a long time. I've seen some people that are kind of disappointed. I've seen some people that are just happy to have something. I think uh, some people are just frustrated at this point. Halo is one of the big things in gaming and it should be up there. It deserves 
everything. It deserves to be awesome. So people are just hoping for the best and really expecting more. Again, like I said, I can't get too deep into it because I haven't played in a while. And I do actually think that's part of the problem with my job specifically. Did a before you buy, did a review on my channel, all that stuff. Halo Infinite, cool, pretty cool campaign. Multiplayer seems like good framework. The, the, the actual core gameplay, the controls, the feel, everything is there. So after a few weeks of playing, I was like, okay, cool, go with God, good luck, Halo, and uh, never looked back. And now I look and it's like the gif of, of the guy from Community with like the, the room on fire. Sorry, did I just say the guy? Did I just refer to Childish Gambino as the guy? Ooh. Anyway, if you are deeper in the Halo world, definitely would love to know what you're thinking on this. Hey, next up, this episode is sponsored by Audible. Now, if you don't know Audible by now, just know that it is the absolute best place to listen to whatever you're interested in. Massive amount of audiobooks from every genre, new and old stuff, podcasts, Audible originals from top experts and stars. You're covered. So if you are an Audible member, you can pick one title per month to keep. All Audible members now also get a growing selection of titles included with the membership and new stuff is added every month. Prime Video's new series, The Rings of Power is here and it takes place thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings. So I mean, that's a really good excuse to get caught up on some of the best series of books ever written. Audible is the go-to place for all Lord of the Rings titles. They got them all. So if you're looking to start somewhere and you're fresh, I'd say The Hobbit, keep it light. It's kind of a good intro to Middle Earth and then you can go from there. It's a great adventure. It also helps that with Audible, the mobile app is absolutely great. I use it for doing chores around the house or when I'm stuck in traffic. So before you binge watch the Rings of Power series on Prime, check out other Lord of the Rings content on Audible. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. So go to audible.com slash L-O-T-R or text L-O-T-R to 500-500. And thanks to Audible for sponsoring our video. Hey, uh, thanks for that, me. Now, let's move on and talk about the newest Konami news. They have come out and said that they are revealing something at Tokyo Game Show, which is very soon. There's going to be a 45-minute showcase September 16th uh, with a new Konami game being announced that they said it is from a game series that is loved around the world, which, of course, makes people's minds go abuzz with all types of possibilities. But it is Konami, and they're, you know, very tall. Own death. So who knows? Now reports and rumors are suggesting, especially people who have had their, uh, you know, their, their sources on the pulse of the big plans. Apparently, this isn't going to be one of the big three that you expect. The big three meaning Silent Hill, Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania. So, uh, a bo Bomberman maybe? Who knows, dude? I'm curious to see, but like I'm keeping my expectations low because Konami. Uh, that being said, there are still rumors, of course, swirling around about Silent Hill. Uh, of course, I just you know, me. Uh, also, Metal Gear Solid rumors have kicked up again uh, with a kind of re-release collection package thing. I've heard it all at this point. I've heard it all behind the scenes as well, specifically with Metal Gear, with Silent Hill. Silent Hill is an absolute definite. Metal Gear, I've, the things I've heard are more murky, but just who knows what's coming next. Anyway, uh, another rumor suggests just more nostalgia plays. The, the newest on the street for Nintendo suggests that Nintendo is planning to uh, have a whole Nintendo Direct focus specifically around cool older stuff, specifically announcing re-releases of Zelda Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, which would be uh, this September. Now that's interesting because of course, your boy had a Wii U and the, the, the Wind Waker version on that was excellent. So to have that on Switch, cool. I know people are tired of re-releases, but for me, it's a little different with Zelda because Zelda is like, you know, the big thing of gaming. So to have those games everywhere, they should be everywhere at this point. Come on, Nintendo. So, you know, this was from Jeff Grubb of GamesBeat, who has a good track record. Uh, also, it's, it's I think it kind of makes sense because it seems like Breath of the Wild 2 is still a ways away. So they want to keep some sort of easy Zelda hype train going. I was happy with the last re-release, the Skyward Sword one. I'm curious to know how you guys feel specifically about Twilight Princess. It's a divisive one. Let me know. Along with that, there is a twinkle of like maybe also the Metroid Prime uh, remasters. Who knows? That's another one that's been talked about forever, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. Next up, just some cool things linked in the description down below. The first is uh, Game Informer. The magazine is actually ramping up their coverage. They got exclusives on God of War Ragnarok. So they're kind of like trickling those things out, but I just wanted to link it if you were hungry for some God of War Ragnarok news. I don't really have much for you today, but I can point you in the right direction at least. Also, the Spider-Man PC mods have been making me very happy. You know, Kermit the Frog, Venom, different suits, amazing Spider-Man suit. All that stuff is great, but nothing compares to this incredible modder who put Slippin' Jimmy in the goddamn game. Yes, better call Saul himself, Saul Goodman, 
Jimmy McGill, whatever you want to call him. Gene Takovic, even. Uh, <laughs> this is just him swinging around. There's a really great trailer. Uh, you can download this on Nexus Mods if you are into modding. Uh, and also just shout out for them to kind of go for a cool art style. It's kind of like a PS1, early PS2 kind of pared down design that I think is very crafty and creative. Also, sidebar, one of the best shows ever made. Uh, but let's move on. This week, of course, as you know, Friday, today, The Last of Us Part 1, the kind of remake of the original game, is releasing. I haven't slept. I've been playing it since it released, as you can tell on my face. Seems pretty good. Expensive, but I'll, I'll have it before you buy, breaking it all down for you, of course. I uh, also just wanted to shout out Voyager's Revenge, the YouTuber that we've shared before who has done great super cuts, awesome edits of like the Daredevil costume, the Batman costume, and Sifu is at it once again with a cool Last of Us clip. I just love his content, so just wanted to give him a shout. Keep doing your thing, dude. And then in some industry type news, uh, From Software is uh, getting more acquired, essentially. I'm not a businessy type guy, but both Tencent and Sony have increased their stakes and bought more shares in From Software's parent company that is not discussed much. Uh, it's worth noting is the Kadokawa Corporation. Fun fact. So read up on that. I'll link that in the description down below. Uh, but along with that industry baseball news, Quantic Dream has also been acquired. This didn't really make headlines too much, but the developers of stuff like Detroit Become Human, uh, Heavy Rain, but also the most important one, Indigo Prophecy, uh, have been acquired by NetEase. According to their statements, uh, they're going to continue to operate independently. As you know, uh, they have a bunch of projects in the works from a Star Wars game to that smaller experience game. And yeah, so things are probably just gonna move along, but there's the, the big companies just get more money. Also, speaking of uh, big companies getting more money, let's talk about Valve. Valve Software has once again kind of come out and said, yeah, they're, they're making games. When are we gonna see them? Who knows? But it's good to know they're making them. A Valve person uh, named Greg Coomer did an interview with Famitsu and had some pretty good quotes. We're not stopping making games at all. Valve has a lot of games in development. We will continue to release games. Game development is very important to Valve. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but the percentage of employees involved in game development is high. And on Half-Life specifically, he said, and I quote, the short answer is yes, there's more to say about the Half-Life world. Alex is a sign that Valve has more to say. They've also said that they'd like to eventually make another portal. So this actually isn't, we've actually heard statements from the past uh, from Gaben and other Valve people that they're like, yeah, there are people in there working, working away on games, but we haven't seen so much. You know, there was the card game, there was the incredible, my like one of my all-time favorites, Half-Life Alex. but Valve is a very non-traditional company, so uh, they do things very differently. So I'm curious to see when we'll actually see these games, but to know that they're on something Good, because the last thing they put out, the uh, the fun little game experience on the Steam Deck, what was that called? Aperture Desk Lab? Desk Lab? Aperture Desk? Science. Desk Job. Desk Job? Desk job? Yeah. Desk job? Incredible. Awesome. It was just this fun little free thing, but it shows that they're still at the top of their game. So, yeah. Good luck, guys. Let's do it. I want, I want some games. But with the news this week, I definitely want to know what you're thinking about everything going on. From The Last of Us Part 1, what are you thinking so far? Uh, to the fact that there's a new Assassin's Creed on the horizon, possibly slated for early 2023. And a Mafia game. What do you want from that? Do you want what I said? Or do you got bigger, grander ideas? Let's talk about all this stuff down in the comments. Uh, you know, we'll be down there as much as possible, as always. But things get a little crazy. So if you want to yell at me directly, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino and my YouTube channel at Jake Baldino. But I'm going to get back to work on the before you buy for The Last of Us and then I'm going on vacation. So if anything goes wrong, don't blame me. But thank you guys for being here. Love you. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Clicking a like button helps us. I'll see you next Friday. Pizza's on me.